today we're, of course, uh, confirming uh, and announcing that we have just launched a, a eight-week national consultation period for modernizing Canada's copyright uh, legislation and regime. We need to maintain in copyright law an appropriate balance between the rights that we protect and the interests of the public to engage with the protected works. But we're not in the U.S., but we already act like we're in the U.S. So this is kind of pathetic Canadian thing, it seems to me. And one of the dangers of it is that we don't know what we might lose if we were to follow the American path. One of our strongest positions is that appropriation art is legitimate art, period. It's the first time, in, certainly in Canadian history, that we've had work that is illegal, not because of you know, hate literature or something like that, but simply because of the process used to create it. But our legislators do absolutely have to understand the need to protect the public domain of knowledge because that's where innovation comes from. That's where Canadians and Canadian firms and Canadian writers and songwriters, that's where they go to for their material. Anti-circumvention laws are uh, there to benefit corporations, not creators. If libraries did not have an exception to the anti-circumvention legislation, they would actually would not be able to do their jobs. Anti-circumvention rules could certainly cause researchers to shy away from doing research in certain areas. Digital rights management completely goes against the rights of the consumer to make backups of products they have paid hard-earned cash for. And if you start putting um, DRMs on the internet, if you start having collectives taxing the internet or levying the internet, you are, are, are collecting fees for something that publishers, copy, some copyright owners had no intention of making money with. At this point in time, I think a legislative response is necessary, not just to cover DRM software on compact discs, but also any type of software that could be installed on your computer. Traditionally, the Privacy Commissioner is not thought to be part of the copyright world, but I think those who are involved in proposing this law now should know that it has an impact on privacy. Personally, I tend to lean towards thinking that it is fair for consumers to be able to purchase various devices, various material, and for them to be able to be used interchangeably. Why should someone in Australia not be able to watch a DVD that has been released in North America? There's no reason for that um, at all. And all that does is get some kid in North America to rip it using handbrake, put it up on the internet so the kid in, 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 in Australia can watch it. So regional coding, again, it's about control, which basically stymies commercial viability. I think we'd start off with noting that this is a complex area. There has been a tendency to think that all of this will just go away if we ratify the WIPO internet treaties. The reality is that it's far more complicated than that. That kind of legislation hasn't served artists well. It hasn't served those very businesses well. Instead, what I think we need is for the federal government to promote the kind of dialogue that we've started to see here in Canada recognize that a U.S. approach to copyright law isn't in our national interest and that we can look to other countries, whether Israel or New Zealand or Australia or the U.K. or the Scandinavian countries, and we can pull out the best that each of those countries have to offer to craft a truly made in Canada solution, one that meets our national interests and one that at the end of the day will serve all, all Canadians.